What's up everybody, Drew right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Modern Warfare 2 open beta that just released the other day. Well actually it's been out for a couple of days, but now it's finally open for Xbox and PC players. If you pre-ordered it that is. And I just kind of wanted to talk about it. Because it has been a very long time since the last time I played a Call of Duty. Well, not that long. Because the last time I played was actually Modern Warfare 2019. But I've been with the series since the early days. You know, the first one and Big Red 1. Yeah, I'm that old. But I really stopped playing this series around ghost because i felt like it was getting really stale to me the game was coming out yearly and the gameplay felt similar after every installment and it started to become like why am i paying 60 dollars yearly for the same game every year so i left call of duty for madden and uh, found out how worse that series was i would occasionally peek back into the series to see if it you know got any different and for the most part it stayed relatively the same the only time that i felt like the game actually changed a little bit was with modern warfare 2019 that was the one that i felt was actually a little better than other Call of Duties that I played after Ghost. But for the most part, they pretty much stayed the same. You know, crackheads running around, snapshotting people, and all that stuff. But I gotta say, Modern Warfare 2, I guess I'll call it 2022, is surprising surprisingly good. Honestly, I think it's better than 2019 in my personal opinion. I mean, I like 2019, but I think this one really improves on it in a lot of ways. It's once again a gorgeous looking game. Not as gritty as 2019. Like, they added a little bit of color here and there, but it's not as colorful as like a over-the-top Fortnite. No, it's pretty subtle. If I was to compare any games, it's like Fallout 3 to Fallout 4, from grays and greens to a little bit of color, just darker shades of everything. I like the maps. I don't think there's anyone that I really hated. I'm not sure if these are like remakes I i've never seen these maps before in previous call of duties but then again i haven't played like the last two all that much because i thought they were kind of garbage compared to 2019 but i like the maps i thought that they were pretty good there wasn't any map that i hated i thought for the most part that they were pretty balanced usually when i play a call of duty there's always like three lanes and i think most of them had that but it was made in a way so that you couldn't tell i'm not really sure if call of duty has been like this before but you can get really vertical with these maps like with the climbing mechanic you can basically climb all the way up on top of the roofs and shoot downwards and i thought that that was pretty cool i ended up getting the drop on a lot of people with that kind of reminds me of the first days of getting vaulting over walls and squad no one is safe they also have a mechanic where you can basically hang on walls and that's honestly a really useful mechanic for trying to peek over to see if there's someone on the other side of a wall and you can just shoot over it kind of goofy looking from like the third person view though you look like a freaking monkey just hanging out trying to get a banana or something but i like that it's here saw it in the trailer but i was wondering how to do it it's actually more simpler than I thought. When it comes to the gameplay and gunplay, it's pretty good, but it does take a bit of a slower movement. Like, it's not as fast as previous Call of Duties. They definitely tone back the pace. And in my personal opinion, I think this is actually a pretty good change. I gotta say that this one probably feels more tactical than previous ones, but I still have to remind myself that this is an arcade game. It feels more tactical, but then I see somebody bunny hopping and drop shotting, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is Call of Duty. Bunny hopping and drop shotting is a thing in this game, but it's not as bad as you think. At least for me anyway, I could handle it. It's annoying, but if you're quick on the draw, it ain't too bad. But anyways, the gameplay and gunplay are pretty good. Oh my god, the animations for the guns in the first person view are... Mwah! Chef's kiss. From reloads to inspecting weapons and pulling back charge handles. Oh my god. Best of its class. Hands down. And the third person animations. Oh my god. This look, they look so realistic. Like you could actually see someone like moving left to right the way that the animations go back and forth. It's so cool. When I saw somebody get revived, I actually see them getting up the way that they're laying down. Because if he was pretending to be down the entire time. Whenever I see someone get revived in a video game, usually there's like an animation that it snaps to to get up. But when he was laying down it looked like he actually like got up from the way that he was laying down you know if that makes any sense the animations in this game are really top tier not gonna lie probably the most polished that i've seen in a call of duty but to be fair i haven't really played the previous ones all that much so i have no idea if this is actually as good as the previous ones you can let me know down in the comments below with that one but uh you know for a beta the optimization was surprisingly really good good it's rare for me to run into a beta that actually has good optimization and really good hit ridge there were maybe a couple of times where i did see maybe like one or two desync or maybe a hit ridge that wasn't on point but for the most part it felt really good like my hits were pretty much on point it just depended on where i actually needed to hit them for the most part i'm not saying that this open beta was perfect there definitely were some issues trying to get into the open beta was actually a hassle for a lot of people i don't know why but for some reason they were asking 
asking for like an extra phone number or to verify my phone number or something like that. So I just went through the process and I ended up getting in right away. So I'm not really sure why a lot of people were having issue with that. I saw a lot of people complaining about it. But after that, I crashed at least two times in my four hour session by myself while I was streaming, which if you want to watch that, I'll have a link to that in the eye icon or at the bottom in the description. And while playing with others, I must have crashed at least four or five times. Saw a couple of weird glitches where character models would look like character models from Battlefield 2042 in its beginning stages. Those are some weird glitches. And the kill cam was kind of wonky with a lot of weird flashes. But aside from that, I had a really good time. The crashes were far and in between. Not enough for it to be annoying to me. It happened after maybe like an hour. I'd already played like seven or eight games at that point. Honestly, I just don't see the complaints. Somebody came into my stream and said, I want you to uninstall this turd of a game. I honestly don't know what makes this game a turd. Somebody really has to explain that one to me because I was having a lot of fun with it. I know that there was a lot of people complaining about something really dumb and mundane. They were comparing it to 2042 as if they took out some like real core features that changed up the game. And I was like, red dots? Are you fucking serious? Did you play 2042 beta? Because they took away fundamental and basic features, not just something mundane. Huh? In what world? Listen, I get it. Not everybody has the same taste, okay? There are gonna be people that somehow like 2042, and you know, that's okay. You, you're allowed to like it. I mean, when I played it, I thought that the gameplay was okay, but I thought that everything around it was severely lacking in terms of fundamental features, mechanics, destruction, map variety, weapons, staples of the franchise, and it was broken. I'm a Battlefield fan, but if you're trying to sit here and tell me that Modern Warfare 2 2022 is not as good good or worse than battlefield 2042 is nah just nah 2042 doesn't even have a campaign if 2042 had been anything like battlefield 4 i probably would have had a hard time deciding between modern warfare 2 and 2042 but 2042 is not battlefield 4 it is a far worse battlefield in my opinion now you may disagree and that's completely fine you know you, you like battlefield 2042 that's okay that doesn't mean i like it i think it's the worst battlefield to date and people are trying to tell me that 2042 is better that's one hell of a stretch not gonna lie but i'm getting a bit off topic here what was I talking about? Oh yeah. They're talking about like red dots on the map so that they can see where the bad guys are. Such a dumb complaint that it's just like a fart in the wind. And it's not really even a change because the minimap still shows red dots on the map, but only when they actually shoot. Or if you actually do want to see more red dots on the map, then pop a UAV. I know it requires some skill to get to it, but that's one way to earn it. For the most part, the game requires you to pay attention to footsteps and gunshots as to where they're coming from. That's why I'm saying it's a little more tactical in that sense because you require to hear where the guys are better change in my opinion instead of knowing exactly where the bad guy is another thing that makes this game feel tactical is that you can't cancel the reload anymore if you try to cancel the reload he will not put the mag back in his rifle <laughs> i found that out the hard way i was thinking i could cancel the reload but instead when i tried to shoot the next guy i didn't have a mag in my thing so i was just like click 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 i was like no Remember kids, always stop and reload your weapon. I think the most fundamental change that makes sense to like not like is probably the perk system. They turned them into packages, which my buddy said that was actually a deal breaker. I mean, me personally, I didn't care too much about it because I was more focused on the gameplay and how that felt, but I just completely forgot that this game had perks in my personal opinion. But my buddy is more of a Call of Duty player than I am, so this probably was an actual deal breaker to him. Luckily, you can edit the perk packages, but the way that they have it they're kind of making it streamlined so that you're probably not going to use a lot of these perks so you're not going to be able to do custom builds like you were able to in previous call of duties like if you wanted to do like a stealth build or something you're just unable to and they're tied to the rank system which is not necessarily a bad thing it's just a package thing that's really putting a lot of people off and also another one is probably the ui it's not the worst ui i've ever seen but it is kind of weird like why do i have to go back multiple pages to get to domination and go forward to get to all the other ones why isn't it all just on one screen it's such a weird i hope they fix it but anyways the sounds in the game are pretty good the gun sounds are not the best i've heard but they're pretty you know good overall i think that the game is pretty solid when it comes to the gunsmith i think the way that it works is that you keep using the same weapon in order to unlock all of its attachments and all that stuff and if there's anything that i've noticed about it is that the attachments actually make the gun feel better i mean that makes sense right if you put an attachment on it it's gonna make the gun feel better and shoot better right 
I feel like it has more of an impact here than it did in 2019. So if you want your guns to actually play better, attachments is where it's at. There is a noticeable difference in performance. When it comes to their game modes, they got the standard TDM and Domination. They were pretty well in every map that I played them on. They had two new game modes that were very similar called uh, Prisoner, Rescue, and Knockout. Knockout, I think, was my favorite out of all the newer game modes. Well, basically what they are is kind of like Search and Destroy, except you're able to res your teammates, and I believe it's a six versus six. But in Knockout, you have to pick up like a briefcase or a package or something and hold on to it or kill the other team. But as you're holding on to it, the time goes down, and if you drop it, the time doesn't go back up. It stays where it's at, and if the other team was to pick it up and it's at that time that you left it at, the timer will keep going down until the game's over and whoever's holding it wins the game. Same thing with Prisoner Rescue. Like, the only difference really is that there's two hostages on the map and one team is defending and the other one is gonna take the hostage and extract them both. That's like the only difference really. I think I like Knockout more than I like the Prisoner Rescue, but those are those modes. There was another one that was called Invasion. Probably the one that I liked the least. But you're playing in giant maps that I'm pretty sure are gonna be the Battle Royale maps with AI grunts running around kind of like Titanfall 2 essentially what it is is kind of like a battlefield type mode where it's just like a giant TDM kind of lame in my opinion feels kind of tacked on from what I understand it's supposed to be like ground war from 2019 but apparently ground war was more fleshed out than this game mode is I played it a couple times but I don't remember it being fleshed out like it kind of feels the same to me but I could be wrong if it was player versus player I think it would be a lot better but since the AI is there it kind of feels like pointless to have have AI there. Maybe if the AI was holding an objective like how it does in, I forget that mode from Halo 5 where it was like a big ground war and you'd have AI sitting in a base defending it while the players go out and try to take other bases or just fight each other. Like Invasion could definitely be a cool game mode but really it just kind of feels tacked on. Like it's not my favorite mode. Not fully fleshed out. Like if they really wanted to do like a battlefield game they just add like a rush type game mode or a conquest you know. Just do it. Who cares if you're copying battlefield. One of the game modes that I thought was really experimental was the third person one. I thought it was pretty interesting and I think I ended up liking it. I believe they had hard point and domination. Those were the only modes that I thought that I saw. But yeah, third person I thought was interesting. I think I ended up liking it. But the transitions between third and first person when aiming could be a little more smoother because when it happens, it does like a snap instead of like a fast zoom, you know? I kind of wish that they gave you the option to zoom over the shoulder instead of going straight to iron iron sights. I think that would have made the game a lot better in my opinion. You know, kind of like how Gears of War is, where when you zoom in, you zoom over the shoulder. That would have been cool. Also, why is switching shoulders the shift key? That's such a bad placement for the button because not only do I use the shift key to run, I also double tap it to do the sprint. A lot of the button placements in this game are kind of weird, not gonna lie. The maps were definitely not built for third person because there were a lot of times when the map of affected my ability to be great getting stuck on corners or hard to see through doors you know stuff like that again i did like this game mode but it kind of goes to show that they want to implement new ideas but they just don't have the time to refine a lot of these ideas you know because call of duty wants to release like yearly or i guess every two years now they don't have the time to like refine these ideas or maybe in the next call of duty they'll be able to make the third person work really well i mean i actually did have quite a bit of fun with it but there are obviously some glaring issues issues with it that I would like to see fixed but aside from that I thought it was pretty cool so yeah that's pretty much all I really got to say about the open beta I thought it was pretty cool I think they're adding more as the beta goes on but I'm not too sure we're definitely not looking at the full version of the Call of Duty obviously they're still hiding stuff until we get to launch but uh yeah I'm not saying that I'm gonna be doing this game a lot on the channel I'll probably maybe upload like once or twice because Call of Duty just doesn't do good on my channel normally. I'll mostly be playing this game in the background like how I did with Halo Infinite but I stopped playing Halo Infinite the moment that I realized that they weren't dropping any content. It's like oh what the hell? What kind of live service is this? But anyways. I think that's where I'm gonna end the video. If you enjoyed the fact that I cover games like Modern Warfare then be sure to like the video, share the video, comment down below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel check out my Patreon or hop on that drum button send a thank you in the comments. Any donation helps. If you're someone that's new to the channel be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on Modern Warfare or any other game that I decide to cover. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.